What is going on in the stock market? Are investors starting to become scared or are they just being stupid? In my video last week regarding equities, I said, now where are we? Well, now where we are is we still have a very, very high bottom confirmation level here. In fact, it's at 100%, but look what's happening with the confidence level. The confidence level is not only low down here, but it's falling. This makes me a little bit afraid that we could see a soft market, at least in the early part of next week, maybe even a down market. And regarding treasuries, I also said, so if we look at what happened on Friday, as I pointed out, all of these treasuries, short, intermediate, intermediate to long, and long, all dropped on Friday. But look at what happened. While they were dropping, buyers were stepping in and buying. You can see the buying pressure increasing in every single instance here. This is really healthy. This is buying on the dips. These are the people that are, have a fear of missing out. Things have gone up. They see their opportunity. Treasuries dropped, and now they're jumping in to buy. I put a link to that video in the pinned comments below. And if we look at what happened on Monday, it's very clear there was a softening in the major equity indices with a flight to safety in the form of treasury ETFs. Now, after that brief one-day pause, the markets, including equities, treasuries, gold, and cryptos, all moved higher. So why is this erratic behavior happening? And what could it mean to you going forward? Let's take a look at the metrics to find out. So as you can see, when we look back over the past week, we had a very healthy rally in the stock markets. Now, the ARK Invest ETF, which contains the riskiest equities, finished well above all of the other indices. You can see the NASDAQ actually lagged a little bit here, but small caps came roaring back. This looks very, very healthy. How about over the past month? Well, over the past month, we've had one heck of a great ride here with ARK Invest up 26.5%, the NASDAQ up 7.29%, Dow Jones Industrial Average up 7.29%, the S&P at 658 and small caps up 8.85%. This is very healthy. And what about year-to-date? Well, year-to-date, we're... <laughs> We're uh, continuing what started early in the year. We've had a wonderful rally here with ARK Invest up almost 60%, the NASDAQ up 47%, and the S&P up 20.56%. This is fabulous. Couldn't ask for more. I'm afraid to say how I feel. And how does all of this show up in the bottom dynamics? Well, <laughs> it's been kind of a little wonky here, but you can see this blue line, which is a bottom confirmation, signal is sitting here right at 100%, took a little dip here, and then ended on Friday at 100% again. Now, you can see back here we had a bottom confirmation where the signal was up here in the 90%, 90 plus percent range, but the confidence level, the equity risk confidence level was very, very high. So this is a very strong confirmation that this was a bottom back here where we had a bottom forming indication. Well, now where are we? Well, now this is heading higher, but the confidence level is, has been kind of waffling down here at a lower level, but you can see it's also pointing higher now. Uh, this tells me we're likely to go higher next week, and you'll see this in the other indicators as well as we go through these metrics. And speaking of the other indicators, yeah, this is telling a great story here. You can see that the risk acceleration is just falling off of a cliff here. It's pointing right down here at the bottom. It's below 40. Uh, this is great. And in previous videos, I've talked about how this red line, the, the risk level, will come down. I was talking about it back here, that you'll see it fall as we go forward. And you can see that's exactly what's been happening. Now, the opportunity level looks like it's falling here. But that's nothing to be concerned about. It's doing that because some of the ETFs I use for measuring this are being displaced by even higher risk ETFs. So while this shows uh, some sense of concern, um, I'm not concerned at all. And how does all of this show up in equity versus safety? 
Well, if we take a look at equity versus safety, uh, you can see that we're in a wonderful place here. And let's take a look at how some of these have moved around over the last several weeks. So if we look at the NASDAQ 100, you can see that it's done a very nice job, it was up here in first place, and it's taking a little bit of a breather here and moved down to third place. Is this bad? No, I don't think so. Because you can see, and we'll plot this earlier, you can see that small caps uh, have moved up even higher than the NASDAQ 100. So this has taken a little bit of a pause, and you'll see that in the pricing behavior, but the small caps have just roared ahead here, which is really good. And you can see if we look at cash, cash is right where we want it, way down here at the bottom. Love this. And here again are our small caps, which were kind of lagging behind back here. And then investors went, holy mackerel, I should throw some of my money in these riskier equities, and they drove the prices higher. So you can see that here. And what if we look at safe haven assets? Well, you can see that the safety assets are all down here at the bottom, exactly where you want to see them. Now, if we look at the longer duration treasuries, uh, this is exactly what you want to see. This is a very healthy treasury market with the longest duration treasuries ranked better than high-risk equities. These have been roaring higher lately as the markets have figured out that the Fed's probably going to have to start lowering rates. And you can see that also in the 20-year bonds. They've moved up here very nicely as well. So this is a, just a great-looking picture. Nothing to worry about here. And how does all of this show up in the buying and selling pressure? Well, if we take a look at the buying and selling pressure, you can see that there's been some flight to safer equities here in the Dow. You can see that the buying pressure uh, over the past two months, this long dashed line, has been in increasing. And the solid gray line, which is the more real-time buying pressure, uh, has been moving higher, and the price has been moving higher. So there's somewhat of a flight to safer equities here. And I, you know, I see this as investors getting scared because the riskier assets have gone up so much, they're selling them, taking a profit, and putting it into safer equities. I don't recommend this, especially in a taxable account where you're going to get whacked paying taxes. And then if we look at the S&P 500, you can see that the selling pressure has actually fallen off here a bit, but is continuing higher. And the price has been moving up very nicely. Now, here's the pause I was talking about with the NASDAQ 100. You can see that the price moved up very nicely and then has been kind of consolidating sideways while the buying pressure has fallen off. I'm not concerned about this pause right here. And then if we look at ARK Invest, a uh, very, very nice rally here, and the buying pressure is well above the selling pressure and moving higher. This looks great. What about small caps? Wow. Well, small caps, you can see they were kind of noodling here, and, and the, they went through a kind of a long consolidation here, just like the NASDAQ is doing right now. But what happened? Then investors started piling in. You can see that here in the buying pressure, which is shooting higher and the price, which is really shooting higher. This looks great. Now let's take a look at sector rankings because these tell you kind of what's going on in the undercurrents of the markets. Now remember, these tend to move more slowly. These sector rankings take kind of a longer view. So they're telling you where things were more than where things might be going. But let's take a look. So if we look at last week, this top table, you can see the cash was way up here, but the NASDAQ 100 and technology ETF XLK were right up here near the top. This looks great. Bitcoin, obviously, in first place. And where was ARK Innovation? Down here at the bottom. Okay, great. Um, and then you can see consumer discretionary was way down here. Consumer staples were up here. So if we fast forward to this week, where are we? Well, cash is falling. That's good. You can see that consumer discretionary is moving up. Consumer staples have pulled back a bit. And good old ARC Innovation, where is that? That has moved up from last place all the way up here into the middle of the table. This looks great. And you can see that the NASDAQ 100, XLK are still up here. This looks great. The semiconductor index has moved up from down here to up here. This looks great. And the Dow... The safer equities have actually slipped back a bit according to this. Now let's see if that holds up when we look. And, and, and the S&P 500 has also slipped back a bit here. So let's see if all that holds up 
when we look at sector rank accelerations. So if we take a look at sector rank acceleration, you can see this looks great. I mean, cash is still way down here, right where you want it. You can see that treasuries have slid down, safe haven assets have sort of slid down a bit. Consumer staples have slid down, so safer assets have slid down, while consumer discretionary, riskier assets have moved up. And what's happening with the Dow? Well, let's see, the Dow was here, and it moved down a notch. Okay, that makes sense. And the S&P 500, which was up here, has moved down to here. So that kind of makes sense based on what we're seeing. And how, is, how are the riskier assets done? Well, the NASDAQ 100 has shifted down a little bit. Remember, it's taking kind of a pause here. And what about small caps? Where in the heck are they? Oh, my God, they were all the way down here uh, last week. And now, where are they? Now they've moved up quite a bit here. So this looks really, really good. No complaints here. And ARK Innovation, wow, all the way up here uh, in third place. This is great. And it's moved up from last week from here all the way up to here. And, and SOX, semiconductors are really roaring. They're in first place. This looks really, really good from a risk tolerance standpoint. And how have treasuries been performing? Well, it couldn't be better. Look at this. Uh, we've got really wonderful gains here for treasuries, which are basically safer assets. Uh, you've got uh, EDV, the longest duration treasuries, up 4.28% for the week. 20-year bonds up almost 3% for the week. 7- to 10-year bonds up 1.6% for the week. I mean, this is, this is great. How about over the last month? Over the last month, uh, you, you really couldn't ask for much more than this. Uh, we've got uh, the longest duration bonds up 10% for the month, uh, and 20 years up 6.84%. These are equity gains, but they're coming from treasuries. This is a wonderful opportunity. And I've been talking about this for many, many weeks, that when these were dropping, as you'll see when we look year to date, when these were down here, I, st I started talking about these are going to turn out to be a bargain and you might want to step in and start dollar cost averaging in. Well, look at what's happened since then. We've had a very, very nice rally and a run higher. So this looks great. So how does all of this show up in the buying and selling pressure? Well, you can see what started last week where the prices were rising and the buying pressure was really rising. You can see that that trend has continued. The prices have moved higher and the and the buying pressure in this case went through the roof. Now you can see with um, intermediate treasuries, uh, the buying pressure really shot up here and the prices moved higher. Seven to 10 years, same thing. Increasing buying pressure, prices moving higher. 20 years, increasing prices, buying pressure moving higher. This looks really, really healthy. And I almost forgot to mention that yield curve. Well, let's take a look at the yield curve. We're a little bit more moderate than we were a few weeks ago, where this was about 50 basis points inverted. Now we're at 34. And if you remember, I said that it's likely we were going to become more inverted because the markets control yields here at the long end. And the yields were dropping here, but the Fed hasn't dropped yields at the short end. So the, the curve was going to naturally become more inverted until the Fed catches up with the markets. And what about the Fed rate monitoring tool? Well, almost 99% of the markets think that the Fed's going to leave rates flat when they meet in just a few days on December 13th. So we'll see what happens there. But what do the markets think going forward? Well, you can see what they think, as we just mentioned, about the December 13th meeting. But what about the January 31st meeting? Well, you can see that the markets are starting to tilt toward maybe a lowering of rates. And what if we move ahead to the next quarter? Even more of the market starts to think not only will the Fed lower rates, but they might actually lower quite a bit. And then if we go into May, you can see what the trend here. So the markets tend to think that going forward into the next summer, rates are going to be lower. And you can see that here big time. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. The markets aren't always right, but I think they might be in this case. Like and what about gold? Wow. Well, this is continuing to rally. You can see that here. It's moving higher. 
the buying pressure is moving up very nicely and the selling pressure is dropping. This looks really, really good. Don't quite know what to make of this. We don't own go uh, gold at all. Uh, we don't own GLD for certain because it has some wonky tax uh, consequences that we don't want our clients to be subjected to. But this has been looking really good. I just don't know how long this will last. And what about Bitcoin and cryptos in general? Well, you can see the price has just been moving higher and higher and higher here. But it's been moving higher while the buying pressure has been trending lower. So interesting to see how this plays out. Um, right now, they're just kind of, you know, in a nowhere land. I look at the buying and selling pressure and they're just kind of way down here at these fairly low levels, trading places. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out over the next week or two. Look, if you're going to be a long-term investor, and I highly recommend this approach, then allocate your portfolios according to your risk tolerance and stop rebalancing, or worse yet, selling after big gains. And hold on for the long term, especially if you're managing a taxable account where selling will cost you big time. I discuss how to allocate your portfolios in two key videos linked in the pinned comments below, titled The Ideal Portfolio Using Just Two ETFs or Mutual Funds, and the other video is titled The Ideal Portfolio Using Individual Equities. Again, link in the pinned comments. Until next week, I'm Calvin Rose, and thank you for watching Invest Smarter. That's all for now. Stay up all night, gotta work now Make up my mind and it turns around Say that I'm fine till I burn out Thinking this money sounded so nice Ambush it written in the strobe lights Pay anything for the high price This life feels like the sunny water This wasn't gold proof Packing my bags like it's all true